We're not going to spend a lot of time on Michigan. I don't even know where to begin, Thanks, frankly. Thank it was it was uh, <laughs> it was an interesting life experience. Yeah. Three years there for you. And I mean, I've been trying to think about even what to ask you or where to go with this. But if I mean, it would it would seem I'm sure that you've had probably immediately had second thoughts about taking that job. But if you could do one thing over again in those three years, what would you pick? I wouldn't be as so much this tunnel visioned as you know as most coaches are when they get there you know focus on your players recruiting development and all that and and not listen to outside the noise that's always the advice you hear well had I been more open maybe I would have seen some things that were happening that were kind of undermining the program and what we're trying to do from day one. You know, you just take the assumption that no matter where you go, that everybody that's in your organization or at your school is rooting for you and wanting you to win. If you've got your own, I guess I call it your own people that aren't rooting for you or aren't helping you, you know, build a program and they got pulling the rope in different directions, it makes it more difficult. And there was mistakes that we made too, certainly. Uh, but I found out a whole lot more things after I left it this thing has happened over here and this has happened over here and this you're trying to build a program. I mean, uh, it, it was, um, there's a lot more drought side drama that I should have had my eyes and ears out there seeing. And that was all me for not paying attention more or some people that were giving me tips that, hey coach, this has happened. I'm like, also maybe not partly happening. not being in the Michigan family, so to speak, and coming yeah. in as an outsider. That can be an insular world, yeah, right? Yeah, and I know, but you know, Bo Schembecker wasn't a Michigan guy when he went there too. I think you know sometimes an Ohio State the, guy. <laughs> yeah, it's sometimes perception and reality and 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 all that I have a different, you know, I talked a little differently, you know, I got a little bit of hillbilly twang and and all that. But the people I met were really terrific. I mean, I was got really close to a lot of the guys that played for Bo. You know, the Rick Leach and Dufex and all those guys that played for Bo Schembecker, they were, they were terrific. You know, a lot of the former players were good. There were a certain faction of former players that, that were um, in, in Lloyd's years that, that maybe didn't, didn't buy in or thought, Who's this, who is this guy? But uh, the Bo's guys and, and the, the guys on the current guys on the team and all, they were really good. And, and, and the worst part about the whole thing to me, and I know this sounds self-serving, Seth, but through all the drama and everything else was going on, we still felt after the second and third year, year four and year five, we were going to be pretty good because we had had a chance to recruit and develop. And Denard Robinson was going to have a couple years. All the kids they've been playing with the last couple years were kids that we not Taylor Rowan, all those guys were kids that we thought were going to be really good players, and and we were going to be primed for success. But you know, three years into it, we're gone. Mm -hmm. uh, and besides um, leaving the school kind of left there with that cloud of the whole NCAA violations with the practice and everything. Is there anything you want to clear up about that? Yeah, I get mad when I think about that. You know, to me, and I don't mind saying it, I thought it was a bunch of BS. I mean, you consider, and we got in trouble for having, in the off season, a strength coach putting a rubber ball on a stick to use as a, you know, a get off thing, as a thing when they do their running. And they said that's a, using football equipment. A rubber ball on a stick. Now think about that. I could have put a hat on a stick. <laughs> And that was something I got in trouble for. And another thing we got in trouble for is letting, you know, some of the interns or quality control guys sit in the room with the coaches while we watch film. Not give any input, just sit there and learn young coaches, want to be coaches, as, as, as a quality control, and they got, that's a violation. There are schools now that are hiring ex-NFL coaches and scouts to do that full time for them. Yet I got a violation because of that. And, it, uh, and I fought, I mean, I fought, I got an attorney and I fought for my name and fought for our program's name because I thought it was, a lot of it was BS. And I still think that way. I mean, you're talking about, you know, mouse crap when there's elephant stuff going on everywhere else. And I said that, but you know, whatever, the, you know, now the rules have changed since then. You know, the NCAA has right. gotten smarter and saying, what are you talking about? But, you know, there were some things procedure wise and paperwork wise that weren't done the way they should have. And that ultimately is my fault. I relied on the same people that had been doing it there for years. The same people that were doing it and doing the same way they were doing it before, they were doing it with me. But they didn't investigate before they investigated me. So uh, I, get, I get a little bitter when I talk about that. In fact, the NSA said it was really neat. I mean, I really think they're trying. And it's not, you know, the NSA is, is, is a tough position and a governing body and all that. But they're hiring people now to go around and talk to schools 
and saying, what's your opinion and all that? And it's the first time coaches have ever a chance to give an opinion. Well, I gave him an earful for about an hour and a half. <laughs> can I, I get said, those I, transcripts? Yeah, I said, I could talk for 10 hours. And I said, and they, they said, well, you can be anonymous. I said, no, no, I want them to know. I said, I've got experience before the NCAA committee. I've got experience being investigated and, you know, spent a life fortune trying to defend our name and, and all that. You know, I could tell you what I thought was fair and unfair. And what they put, not just me, I mean, I, I can, I'm a big boy, but what they put our players and our staff through in the middle of the season, investigating and talking to them and, and all that, uh, was almost unprecedented. I know Miami and all them are going through it, but they had us in the middle of the season pulling kids out of practice, coaches out of meetings and practice to talk about a ball on a stick. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and after That's going amazing. through all of that and, and the, the, what happened at West Virginia and leaving, and so now you're out and you're just dying to get back in. I mean, are you, <laughs> is it just that you're a glutton for punishment or you can't get it out of your well, blood? Um, you're a relatively young man. Yeah, well, I'll get that. Relatively. Aging, yeah, yeah, aging quickly. Thanks for that. Uh, I, you know, I wanted to, I guess I did, felt the job unfinished, you know, and, and, you know, I want to win a national championship, but I want to have a program that everybody's proud of and all that. And, you know, at Michigan, we didn't get an opportunity to finish that. And so I was still kind of, I guess, hungry a little bit to do that. Um, and I missed, I missed the, the, uh, the, the team, were, you know, the practices and the meetings more than the games. The games are fun, but they're more fun for the players. Uh, uh, the practices and the meetings and the development and, and recruiting and, you know, getting to know people and, and all that kind of stuff. I love that. I, you know, it's, um, my passion was probably spiked by that year out. Uh, now, will I do it? You know, as long as Bobby Bowden or Joe Paternal, no. Ten more years, <laughs> Seth, I can, I can put my toes in the sand in a beach or a bunker in ten years, that's for sure. But you know, I love what I'm doing, and uh, I love being around the, the, the guys. Well, listen, I know you're a West Virginian at heart, and uh, you're an East Coast cold weather guy at heart, but i got to tell you, this you seem bad. to be sliding into that desert climate yeah. pretty well and relaxed, and you seem happy, and I'm happy for you. I'm good. I'm, I'm around a lot of great people, the staff, you know, I'm around the people and the community, and, and Tucson's a great place to live. You know, and that's something about waking up every day and sunshine is out there, and, and um, I got another chance to try to build a program. And I'm a, I know I'm going to be probably not as happy in a few weeks and if we're not playing well and winning, but I love where I'm at and who I'm doing it with, and, and uh, they're letting us be who we got to be and letting us build the program we want to build it. So it's all good. Well, that's good. Good to see you smiling. Thanks, Seth. Good being appreciate with you, Coach. Thanks for you. being on the show. Thank really you very much. It.